Surprise, everybody! We are here at the Florida Re VGC Regional Championships with your seniors final match. Uh, we weren't sure if we were going to stream this, but then, surprise, we're it's streaming it. it. We we're here. <laughs> we did it. Um, anyways, we have Devin Winter versus Luca Tregut. Uh, Devin is on the bottom screen and is running Kangaskhan, Smeargle, Cresselia, Groudon, Xerneas, and Salamence against uh, Luca's Salamence, Kyogre, Groudon, Ferrothorn, Thunderous, and Kangaskhan, both kind of standard teams. Yeah, they've both like, found an archetype that they like and they're using it, so uh, Devin's just using what people are calling Big Six. It's a horrible name, but it's, it seems to be sticking, unfortunately. Um, you know, the Smeargle, the Groudon, the Xerneas, really, really threatening kind of things. Um, and then Luca's looking for that double primal. We've seen it all throughout Masters, like every every match has probably got at least one double primal. Um, you know, he only has one weather to worry about, definitely coming from Devon. So if he can maybe try and nullify that, you know, by keeping the Kyogre in a good position, then he could do really well. I think that's going to be a really big thing, really important factor in this match. Oh, definitely. Um, just a refresher for those of you watching, um, if you haven't seen a finals or a top cut match stream before, these are best of three. So we are going to see players, you know, scout a little bit more in game one, try to learn all of their opponent's tricks. But, you know, looking at these teams, they look fairly standard. Um, I would hope that someone has some good tricks up their sleeve, because that always makes these matches very interesting. Yeah, I mean, there's not too much to gather from the leads. Um, yeah. You know, we know that Groudon is going to be red orb. There's that third move slot which is sometimes nice to try and find out about. Kangaskhan's going to be holding the Mega Stone. You know, there's a couple of move slots, the Dead Certs, the Fake Out, the Stab Normal move. There's usually one, it's a little interesting. Um, Thunderous is definitely something to scout for, though. This year it's seen a bit of upheaval. Uh, 2011 it started playing bulky varieties after Ray Rizzo took it to the World Championship with uh, a bold variety. And then sort of 2012, 2013, people looked at using it as a more bulky, Set up. Now he has to figure out what it's doing this year. Yeah, so we are going to see Kangaskhan go ahead and Mega Evolve uh, right away. Possibly going straight into that fake out. Um, Thunderous is going to get a taunt off first, though, onto that Cresselia. But Cresselia reveals it is holding Mental Herb. Its taunt wears off. Groudon goes for the eruption, um, outspeeding that Kangaskhan and almost picking up the KO. Uh, 7 HP left. Uh, Double Edge will connect with Groudon, but unfortunately for Kangaskhan, you know, it did a lot of damage, but it's going to die to the recoil. Yeah, I think Devin's going to be um, potentially a shade confused to why that went first. Um, that's definitely a lot of speed investment in that Groudon. It might be because um, either the Groudon is heavily uh, invested in speed, or that Kangaskhan might... Started the turn as a non-mega. Yeah, it, it started the turn as a non-mega, and Cresselia just used Trick Room, so maybe, you know, Devin decided to run a bulky offensive Kangaskhan and just not run any of that speed, knowing that his Trick Room should be able to pick up the slack. Yeah, I think with it starting the turn and non-mega and him not fake-outing, uh, that definitely, you know, you want to use that turn to get the boosts for next turn. Um, so yeah, he, he just takes up a very clean knockout, essentially. I mean, the Kangaskhan did it to himself, but the eruption was the damage that really mattered. Yeah, do you think that losing that Kangaskhan is enough to swing the momentum in Luka's favor, or will the Trick Room offset that? Um, I think the Trick Room is still... Th I mean, he can still taunt it again this turn. There's no real threat into that Thunderous. I mean, it's going to get hurt by the Groudon for sure, but, you know, he's still able to just taunt it. If that's what he wants to do, he can taunt it. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what other text Cresselia is uh, holding, and if he's even going to reveal them this turn. I mean... He could just go ahead for the eruption on that ground on, possibly, uh, you know, also double with the ice beam into Thunderous and just hope to pick up the KO. Uh, Luca's ground on goes for the protect this turn. Thunderous picks up a second taunt onto Cresselia. It is going to stick this time. There's no more mental herb. But Cresselia probably saw that coming. Goes for the ice beam onto the Thunderous. Uh, reveals that Thunderous is most likely incredibly specially bulky. Um, and Groudon actually went for the Precipice Blades, meaning no other damage was done this turn. Yeah, I mean, Precipice Blades is pressuring the other Groudon, but it's still even that Thunderous. Only going to be able to take damage from the Ice Beam now. That's all Cresselia can do. Um, you know, that's, they're usually with one offensive move, three supporting moves. And although it took him two turns to taunt it, he really, really valuable getting the taunt down in the end. Yeah, knowing that Cresselia can only Ice Beam from this point out uh, against these Pokemon, it can do a little bit of chip damage, as we just saw there. Um, 
probably enough to ensure that uh, Devin's Groudon's eruption does pick up the KO on, you know, on the Groudon and on the Thunderous, but I guess the real question is, now that he's up two Pokemon, will he take this opportunity to switch Cresselia out to, you know, get that Trick Room get in back and possibly get back any other techs he's running on it? Well, I think Devin definitely has to switch something now. I mean, with the Kyogre in, it's not a great time for the Groudon. No, not um, at all. I think there's definitely a lot of information to be gathered. You know, finding out about that Mental Herb was definitely helpful, so maybe he's not going to waste as much time taunting it. And uh, finding out some of the speeds is really important here as well. When people use similar Pokemon, uh, Pokemon with similar speed tiers, then knowing which one goes first in and out of Trick Room, particularly when you have a Trick Room on your own team, is a really helpful little nugget of information. Yeah, I mean, looking at Luca's team, it does not look like he has anything to take advantage of Trick Room. I, I mean, he has Ferrothorn that could be there to possibly punish it. So I wouldn't be surprised if we still see Groudon move first this turn and attempt the Precipice Blades. Whether or not Kangaskhan is going to Mega Evolve and fake it out is to be seen. Uh, yeah, we did get the Mega Evolution, though, so... And we get a Protect from Groudon, possibly anticipating that fake out. Yeah, I think it's odd Groudon doesn't switch out. I mean, it's definitely wanting the Sun. And with these being uh, Lucas Us 2, if he does get it back in at some point by taking it out and bringing it back in, then it gets Sun up which really limits Origin Pulse, and in this case, Water Spout. Yeah, it's possible that, that Kyogre's only running Water Spout, but I know I have seen some that are both Water Spout and Origin Pulse, so we'll have to see. Cresselia, unfortunately, does not survive the Water Spout. It gets knocked out, and in its place, Xerneas is coming in. Not really the best time to set up a Geomancy, I would think. No, and I think that was, in almost the way I feel Devon missed, missed an opportunity. Like, that would have been a nice turn to get Groudon out. You know, the... The Salamence, no, the, Sal the Cresselia was probably going to die. There was a good chance something was going to take it out. So, you know, whatever comes in just has to take the fake out on a water spout, and then he gets to bring things back in for essentially free. Yeah. Um, you know, and he gets the weather control, which I think is something he should look to do, definitely. Yeah, Kangaskhan's going to go ahead and protect, which isn't really a move you see that often on Kangaskhan. Um... Groudon goes for the Precipice Blades. It will not connect with Kyogre. It misses, allowing Kyogre to origin pull both sides of the field. Uh, easily going to pick up a knockout on that Groudon because of the weather. Almost picks up the Groudon on Xerneas. It survives with 51 HP, leaving it an opportunity to uh, Dazzling Gleam the Kyogre, which just is not going to do enough damage in return, I think. It only does maybe 15%. No, Kyogre is a chunky whale. <laughs> I'm trying to drop it down with spread moves like that, even with Fairy Aura pushing it up. It's not going to be the way to go. Uh, yeah. He really needed the damage from Pacifist Blades that turn. And uh, Devin just forfeits. Yeah, I mean, I think a forfeit was the best play for him here. Um, you don't want to reveal too much of your Xerneas. And especially when you're in a situation where it is two versus one, um, there's really no way you can turn it around. Sometimes it's better to just press that forfeit button, you know, hold as much information as you can in your pocket and just hope that it comes into play game two and you can just, you know, turn it around. Yeah, I think it's not only does he not want to give things up, it's definitely like a mental thing for him. He doesn't want to get choked out of a second game, uh, and just or at the end of the first game, and then go into the second game feeling really, really down. You know, he's learned what he can. He knows yeah. a good amount about that team. He knows he may have misplayed, and so he just says, no, let's, let's go again. Let's, I now know what I need to know to take this to a game three. Yeah, so if you're Devin, I mean, how do you play the game too? Do you assume that Groudon's going to be in the back again and just... Are Kyogre's going to be in the back again and just try and hold out and hope that you can, you know, stop it and set up Sun again? Yeah, or... I think Devin missed the, the trick, as we were saying earlier, with, you know, what separates top-tier players playing this double primal archetype is the, their control of the weather. He missed a beat on that one. A couple turns he could have pulled the Groudon out to get the Sun back later, he missed. Yeah. And that kind of cost him the game. I think that's, that's what separates the great and good in a double primal setting. Yeah, definitely. Um... I'll be curious to see what Luca does too here. I mean, he pretty single-handedly won that despite the Trick Room. Um, yeah, I think that's another good thing is, you know, a lot of teams at Trick Room, it, it's all about the Trick Room. Uh, this team doesn't quite need it, but the fact he showed he could win even with it up is really yeah. good news for him. And that's a real confidence thing. You know, yeah. he's got a very positive mental state going into this. Yeah, this I'll be game. curious to see if we see that Thunderous again. Uh, knowing that Cresselia has Mental Herb, you know, it might not be worth taking those two turns to taunt it. Or maybe, maybe it was. I mean, Cresselia was stuck Ice Beaming. Who knows what text it had that could have easily swung the match back around into Devin's favor. Yeah, it, it was stuck Ice Beaming, um, which it's still good damage on the Thunderous. Uh, Devin decides to switch it up with just both his restricted right off the bat. I mean, if there's a, 
If you want to knock something out, these are two to do it. Seriously, we're going to see Groudon and Kangaskhan from Luca's side of the field, though. Um, Kangaskhan able to provide some fake-out pressure. Uh, and, you know, the Groudon's coming into play. Whichever one moves faster has the potential to knock the other one out. So this is really an interesting position for Devin to be in because, you know, he is running the Trick Room team. It's most likely his Groudon is not the fastest thing on the field right now. <laughs> No, I think that's definitely game one information. You know, they both take notes. They want to know where the speed tiers are. Because if there's no real sort of pressure of hesitating, you know, no fake out coming from Devon's side. So, you know, Luke is in a really good position to just throw out a big move with his ground on. Be it a press of his blades or a sun boosted eruption, it's going to hurt. And whichever one he's more scared of on Devon's side, he can pop the fake out onto. Yeah, it'll be curious to see if, you know, Devin decides to try and play it safe and double protect here and, you know, stop the fake out entirely. Or who knows, maybe he'll try to go for the Geomancy, maybe he'll try to go to some damage. I know that it's possible to EV Groudon to survive Press Blades or, um, you know, Earth Power. And if he's already slow, he doesn't need the speed investment. It's very possible that he will just, you know, be bulky enough, pick up the KO, and then just kind of move along. Yeah, I think it's, you know, a lot of people have been experimenting with how they train their Groudon. You know, some people uh, some people just love going timid, you know, that's their favorite nature on it, and they just love to pump out damage nice and early. Uh, Devin doesn't want to play a Groudon mirror, so he switches out him. his Groudon. Yeah, it's not a fun mirror. <laughs> it's not a fun mirror at all. Kangaskhan comes in to take its place while Luca's Kangaskhan goes ahead and Mega Evolves. Uh, possibly confirming that we're going to see a fake out here, maybe into that Groudon slot. Yeah, I mean, if he's... If he's faked out the Xerneas slot, then it's, it's a sort of bad time. But he did, even if he has the Xerneas is protected, not playing this game. It looks like he did fake out the Xerneas, and Groudon did go for the Earth Power onto uh, Devin's Groudon. So it's going to do a decent amount of damage to Kangaskhan, but not as devastating as losing his uh, Primal Pokemon, you know, turn one. Yeah, that's definitely a good switch for Devin. And now he's got the fake out pressure, which is really good for him. Um, I think maybe he could have been better off having it turn one. A lot of people just chuck the Kangaskhan out right from the get-go. But no, he's, you know, he's brought it in. It's sort of safe. It's alive, so I'd say that's safe. It's alive. It has enough priority to still have some sort of impact on the field, even if it does get knocked out this turn. I think the real question is that Xerneas. I mean, we've seen a lot of Xerneas, you know, taking the opportunity to set up Geomancy and then just gaining so much momentum that they just sweep everything. I wonder if that's what we're going to see here. Yeah, if there's a turn to Geomancy, it's it's the turn where this, you have the fake out. It's the turn where you have the fake out. It looks like that move might have almost gone to time, though. Uh, Kangaskhan is swapped out on Luka's side of the field. Thunder is taking its place. Devin's Kangaskhan is going to go ahead and Mega Evolve. So I think that means he clicked in his moves in time. Um, he managed to hit the Mega Evolution button. That was, yeah, he managed that was to hit the thing. Mega Evolution button. He managed to hit the Fake Out button. It connects with Thunderous, though, so Groudon is still able to attack, though that first Fake Out did pick up a crit, and that's a lot of chip damage on a Thunderous, especially now that we have a plus two, plus two, plus two Xerneas on the field. Yeah, the, the only concern with that is uh, he didn't manage to put any damage down onto Groudon. So if Groudon does opt for Eruption, it's still coming off a huge base power. Yeah, we'll have to see what Groudon does this turn. It did Earth Power, meaning it is special. It will go for the Eruption this turn. It's going to easily pick up the KO on Kangaskhan. Doesn't do as much to Xerneas, but, you know, that's still a pretty sizable chunk when you consider that Xerneas is currently at plus two special defense right now. Yeah, Xerneas getting the Geomancy before the Eruption was really handy. And I think, as we were saying earlier when the Kangaskhan came in a turn late, it's a bit similar with this Thunderous. It's a turn too late to taunt it. It's um, a turn too late, but, you know, we have seen players use Thunder Wave as a really good counter to Xerneas' speed. And also just throwing down enough, uh, you know, randomness into the match that those fi fully paralysis could help it pick up, um, you know, a couple extra turns. We are going to see that Thunder Wave connect with Xerneas. Will it attack this turn? It does not. not. He gets the fully par paralysis, leaving Groudon free to Earth Power Devon's Groudon. Whether or not Groudon is EV to survive that, we'll see. It survives with 21 HP, goes for the Precipice Blades, will not connect with Thunderous, but does connect with Luca's Groudon and misses the KO. Yeah, it's By so, a lot. It's so hard to get a Groudon to knock another Groudon out with Precipice Blades. The way it, the natural stats that a Groudon has just allow you to not be bothered. And Earth Power usually gets it, 
but with the way Devin's trained his crowd on, it's, you know, again, it's not getting it either. Um, yeah, if it does get a game three, it's good to know they can't just knock each other out from full health, though. Yeah, it's unfortunate for Devin. Um, if he went for either Moonblast on the Groudon slot there or Dazzling Gleam, that might have done enough damage to the Groudon to pick up that KO, but... It just shows that it, Thunderous does what Thunderous does. Thunderous it, does what Thunderous does, and it does it well. That Thunder Wave is nothing to mess with, even as we turn into 2016. You would think that, you know, with two Groudon on the field that you can't paralyze, that would be a deterrent to it, but it really isn't. Uh, we're going to see Devin's Groudon switch out. We're going to see Cresselia come back in. Maybe try to set up Trick Room to take advantage of the Thunder Wave? Yeah, I mean, if, if there's a time to Trick Room, it's when your Xerneas is at a quarter of its natural speed. Yeah, we're going to see Xerneas protect itself. We're going to see a Precipice Blades from that Groudon. Um, so it's running Earth Power, Precipice Blades, and Eruption. Kind of interesting because at least I've never seen a mixed Groudon run both Precipice Blades and Earth Power. Yeah, usually if they're doubling up on a type, it's the Fire type move. It's not so common they double up on the Ground type move. Yeah. Uh, definitely different, we'll put it that way. It's clearly working, though. I mean, Earth Power and uh, Precipice Blades have done work this game. Uh, Xerneas gets the double protect. Uh, again, Levitate and Protect will mean no damage is done by Groudon this turn. Thunderous goes for the Thunderbolt into that Xerneas, and Cresselia is free to set up Trick Room. Yeah, that's a really good time to get Trick Room up. It's, it's almost annoying. You want to paralyze things for the chance of full paralysis, but then you're helping them out when they set the Trick Room up because they're just super slow. Yeah, it'll be curious to see... Um, you know, what Xerneas tries to do here, and will it be fully paralyzed again? Um, if it manages to attack this turn, we could see Devin, you know, gain back some momentum. He desperately needs to win this match, but if he gets another fully paralysis, then that could spell game over. Uh, he looks like he's committed to this, though. Cresselia goes for the helping hand. Uh, Thunderous protects, so a Moonblast here could be good. A Dazzling Gleam could also be good. Uh, Xerneas will get the Dazzling Gleam, and it will knock out that Groudon, I believe. Should just about deal with it. Yes, just about deal it with is. it. But that's a good turn for Devin. I mean, having Trick Room up now is... There's not really much the Thunderous can do. It's not going to waste time doing those two-turn taunts it needs to do. Um, although bringing the Fake Out pressure is really nice, and that was a good, a good switch earlier to preserve it for later. Yeah, Devin's in this position now where he's forced to protect here to, you know, burn another turn of his own Trick Room. Uh, just so that Xerneas, you know, can live another day to try and pick up, I guess, a double KO, probably with that helping hand Dazzling Gleam again. Yeah, I mean, you're already doing a lot of damage. He's a plus two special attack. He's got Fairy Aura. With and a he helping has helping hand, hands. I'm not sure there's much. Oh. Unfortunately, uh, Xerneas does get the full paralysis. Fake Out will connect with it and do a decent amount of chunk damage. Uh, I believe we're going to see a taunt come in from the Thunderous to that Cresselia, so he will not be able to helping hand next turn. No, oh, will. yeah, he will. That mental He's herb. still not popped the mental herb, but even knowing that. Even knowing that, Cresselia goes for the skill swap onto Kangaskhan, taking away its parental bond yeah, it's... and giving it levitate. So... I, I don't understand why Kangaskhan still has the baby on his side of the field. Maybe he should just, you her know, send it over. Field. Her side of the field. Maybe she should send it over. I mean, without parental bond, there's only so much Kangaskhan can do this turn. I don't think a Sucker Punch will do, be enough to KO Xerneas. Not anymore. I think we, we see skill swap used at a really high level, and there's so many interactions this year where you can take abilities away. You know, you can reset weather, and you can take away essential abilities like parental bond. We are going to see the Kangaskhan swap out. Uh, Kyogre will come in in its place, uh, possibly to try and reset the loss of parental, parental bond. Excuse me. Um, maybe also to give, if Thunderous is running Thunder, Thunder 100% accuracy. We are going to see Cresselia go for the helping hand with that Xerneas. We're going to see Thunderous protect, so hopefully Xerneas moonblasted that Kyogre. Otherwise, not much is going to happen this turn. But it's paralyzed. It's fully paralyzed. That's two times this game. I always, I Three mean, times, maybe. Not to criticize a finalist, but if you've got Parental Bond, you could probably use it. That Ice Beam's going to hit whatever it hits twice. You could hit the Thunderous one and a half times. Yeah, I mean, we did see that it is a, th a bulky Thunderous, but... I mean, Devin's sort of putting all his eggs in the Xerneas basket. It does have the Geomancy boost, and it's now the essentially first thing to move on the field, not the quickest by any stretch. But, you know, if he puts all his eggs in the Xerneas basket and he gets the full paralysis, he's getting nothing. Uh, I think maybe he needs to put some more eggs in Cresselia's... Is that sort of a pouch on the front? Is that, I don't is that know. 
I mean, I would almost see someone riding it like a horse or something, so maybe like a saddlebag. Anyways, um, we're going to see the Kyogre go for the Protect. Um, Cresselia tr skill swaps the Xerneas, gives it Parental Bond. If Xerne Xerneas isn't fully paralyzed this turn, it isn't, but Kyogre protects. Oh. Thunderbolt will connect with the Xerneas. Does it do enough to knock it out? It does not, but Trick Room is done. So... I don't know. We could, if uh, Thunderous taunts the Cresselia here and stops the Trick Room from getting set up again, I think that might be game over. Yeah, I mean, that's such a good idea. Uh, I think he would have had to go for the Thunderous. You know, he's sort of a turn behind, maybe. You know, he needs to think what's going to happen next turn. Maybe he counted the Trick Room turns a little wrong. It is hard in the heat at the moment to really keep a track of it, but yeah. I think that's unfortunate that he, he picks the wrong slot, basically. Yeah, or possibly even uh, Dazzling Gleam there. While he would have done less damage on the Kyogre, you know, it would have been a safer play. It would have given him at least some kind of KO against the Thunderous. We are going to see Kyogre switch out. Um, Kangaskhan is going to come back out on the field. Uh, kind of an interesting switch, but I can see why he would want to try and preserve uh, Kyogre as much as possible. Xerneas does get the Protect up successfully. Thunderbolt does not taunt. It goes for the Thunderbolt into the Xerneas slot, and Cresselia is free to set up another Trick Room. Yeah, that's, that's so we're, not a good time. It's for not a good time. Uh, Kangaskhan can easily fake out that Xerneas for the KO here, but... Yeah, I think that's, that's the redeeming thing is, you know... Although he does have Trick Room, the Xerneas is still under intense pressure. But yeah. having Trick Room for whatever he has left is a really good time. Yeah, it's going to come down to, I think, whether or not Xerneas decides to try for the double protect and whether or not it gets it. You know, with the 30% chance to get the double protect and the 30% chance of paralysis activating, it is really not looking good for that Xerneas. Yeah, I think this could be Xerneas' last ride. Um, you know, it's, it's been on the field a long time considering the plight it was put through. It's been trying to do work. It's just, you know, it's one of those Pokemon where you really have to be on par on the game with your predictions. Unfortunately, Xerneas, it looks like it went for the double protect, but it misses it due to the fully paralysis. Fake Out will connect and pick up the KO easily. Um, and all that's left is a 20-odd-something HP Groudon in the back and that Cresselia, who is now taunted. Yeah, that Cresselia is now stuck ice beaming for the rest of the game. We've seen Trigger and we've seen Skill Swap, we've seen Helping Hand. Its moves are not a secret anymore. At least this turn, it does get an Ice Beam off. It does get an Ice Beam off, and it does reveal that Thunderous is Citrus Berry again, uh, bringing it almost back to half health. Uh, but I think there's just not enough momentum in Devin's uh, field anymore, and I think Luca's going to take this again. Yeah, I mean, if the Groudon wasn't at 21 health, it may be able to just fire off large eruptions. But the fact it's so low, I mean, it yeah. just can't take all three of Luca's Pokemon out before it puts down enough damage to take out Groudon, and subsequently enough to take out Cresselia. Yeah, it's it's interesting though, you know, Luca left Cresselia alone pretty much this entire match. Um, it really goes to show you that while Cresselia is an awesome Pokemon to, you know, use the set of Trick Room, to use the Skill Swap, to Helping Hand, there's really only so much it can do on its own, and sometimes the best strategy when playing it is to just aggressively target its partners until yeah. there's nothing left. Yeah, that's, that's the thing I see a lot this year is, you know, people bring a lot of support Pokemons like Crobats, Cresselias, Bronzongs, all kinds of zany things. But they're not there to do damage, and if they're not threatening you too much, and you're not too worried about what they're doing, you can just take out the partners that deal the damage. At the end of the day, you need to deal enough damage to knock out your opponent's Pokemon. Yeah, Thunderous goes for the Protect here. Cresselia Ice Beam straight into it. A uh, Groudon goes for Fire Punch into that Kangaskhan. Interesting that we didn't see a Sucker Punch there. Does not pick up the KO. Double Edge will pick up the KO on Groudon, though, fairly easily. And I think that's game. Yeah, I mean, the Cresselia, although can Ice Beam, Probably can't Ice Beam through three things. Um, no, I don't think so. And even with the recoil damage, I don't believe Ice Beam would have done enough to pick up the KO on the Kangaskhan if you were to double target it. So we are going to see Devin click in the forfeit. And yeah, that's good games. Your uh, senior finals champion from Florida, the Florida VGC Regional Championships is Luca Tregut. I think that's a well-deserved win. It's, uh, you can't deny his play throughout that final was absolutely fantastic. And Devin's a local player. Plays a lot. He's got a ton of CP. He's definitely qualified for Worlds now, which is really good for him. Yeah. Um, you know, I feel like both of these are pro make Worlds. So they've got the rest of the season just to practice, practice, practice. 
Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if people start switching up their teams to more double uh, primal because, you know, we've seen it this week in uh, senior finals. I wouldn't be surprised if we see it more throughout top eight in uh, ma the master's bracket. Um, we saw it last week in California. Double primals does work. Yeah, this double primals team has been really popular across the board. Lots of people have seen it and just really jumped on the bandwagon with it. Yeah. And they're just finding success with it. Um, I definitely think we'll see it in masters. I know there's a few in there. There's yeah. a few weirder things, definitely. Wasn't uh, Gavin running double primal? Because uh, I think we're having him on next. Uh, I believe there is, yeah. Yeah, so uh, stay tuned for more double primals. Um, we're going to have Gavin and Wolf playing on stream. They're getting seated now, so this should only be a quick. short break. Um, and I think we might also swap out commentators, too. So uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll be back shortly with Wolf versus Gavin for top eight.